Well, hi, it's Jerry. With anything that you own, you have to do maintenance. It doesn't matter whether it's your vehicle, your home, or your RV, things break. And our Batwing antenna, the one that you crank up and adjust, has broke for the second time. Uh, these parts are, you know, plastic. There's not a whole lot to them. And uh, I've replaced it twice and I'm just not gonna do it a third time. I'm gonna try something a little bit different. So let me show you what I'm looking at. So I, I've searched and searched. I thought about actually replacing the Weingard Batwing, the one that you crank up. I thought about replacing that one, just all new parts. But again, this is all gonna be the same. These things are just going to, I mean, the whole mechanism here is completely stripped out. I'm gonna give this a shot. Um, this is your King Jack. Uh, directional antenna. Uh, there's a couple different types of these. This one you don't have to crank up. Uh, I looked at it on Amazon reviews, a couple other reviews. I kind of follow the 9 out of 10 rule. If 9 people like it and they're verified in the purchase, then um, I'll give something the benefit of a doubt. And I'm going to give this the benefit of a doubt. Um, there were some haters in the review. I'm going to be real honest with you. If you go out and do your research, I'll provide a link uh, down in the description and on our iloverbylife.com on the show notes for this for this blog and blog. But um, I think this is going to work out well. Um, there's um, it's, it looks to be a relatively simple system. The the second thing that I I think I'm going to like about this and we'll see um, is how you find your TV station. So how I have to use the Batwing today? I've got a WineGuard app and you put in your zip code and it shows you the antennas in the area and then you have to kind of turn that antenna until you think you're in the compass direction of that then you turn on the TV you scan the channels and then you literally sit there and tune the antenna for all you you know regular RV travelers that do this on a regular basis you know exactly where I'm coming from but you have to kind of sit there and tune the antenna until you get the strongest signal the thing that I, I hope that I'm going to like about this is it has a signal finder or a signal strength meter built into it. And there's actually a process that you go through. So before you ever have to turn your TV on, uh, there's going to be a process. And we'll see how this is going to work where you actually dial the antenna in and then get your strongest signal. Then you can turn your TV on and scan it. If that works well, I think I'm going to like it a lot. So let's see what pieces and parts come inside this. Then I've got the sunscreen on. We're going to head up to the top of the RV and we're going to start the process of replacing this antenna. So let's see what's in the box. Sales materials, more sales materials, um, instructions. We'll see how well these instructions are put together. There's really not a whole lot to this. Um, Here's the antenna itself. It's pretty basic. I do notice that it is, it's plastic. Um, we'll see how it holds up. We'll set it over here. Uh, this is an extension, depending on the thickness of your roof, um, you'll need an extension for it. I don't think that's gonna be my case. This, uh, this is the base. This actually turns the antenna and it has a little push button here that locks it in place. Again, plastic. Oh good, and this is the other part that I'm glad they sent with it. I wasn't sure if we would get this or not. This is the uh, power injector. This power injector actually uh, has the push button that turns the power onto the antenna and then it has your uh, three coax cables. This, I believe, was going bad too. Uh, there is a little bit of a circuit board uh, if you were to look at this in the examination a little bit closer. And I think this thing was a faulty piece as well. So I think I've had the double whammy here of both this going bad and then just you know all the mechanical parts of the antenna going bad as well. There is one other part that I did order I want to show you. Um, on this antenna, it is probably its narrowest point right here. It's probably roughly about three inches. And um, I've read that replacing these older style bat wings, uh, the holes are quite large and that might not cover it. So King has provided a mounting plate if you're retrofitting your existing RV. And um, the, the unit sits right on top 
of this and then this gives you a um, this gives you a very large base you can see it's probably roughly I haven't measured it exactly but about 12 inches square that you can place down you put your antenna on top of this and then you can put all your sealant around top and bottom and make sure you've got a nice base so I mean we don't want any water inside this thing do we so uh, let's start the deconstruction and then we'll put this together. I think it's going to be a couple hour task. I don't think it's going to be too bad. I think I've got a series of problems here and I think this is going to fix all that. Let's head up on the roof. Before we head to the roof, there's a couple things that we want to do. First of all, your power inserter for your old installation. If this is, if this is something you've already had, make sure you do not have that button engaged to where the little red light is on. Make sure that you've got power turned off. So we're going to start the deconstruction here and take this plate off. I'm just going to use a basic, basic drill. And that's all there is to that. Let's go up top. Well, I made it the trip up the roof. Got all my tools up here and we're going to go ahead and start deconstructing this. So it uh, doesn't look like there's a whole lot to this, just some basic tools. If you've watched any of my videos, you've seen me use this tool quite often. Um, it's a paint scraper. One of the things you want to be careful here, just take your time and just kind of take this off in, in chunks. It's fine to bear down hard on the metal here. Get this old lap sealing off. But be ever so careful and don't cut your roof and expose these screws. I'll speed this up and kind of get around this and come back to it later. Be careful if your roof is wet. Fortunately, I've got a beautiful day to do this. Lots of sunscreen on though. It is a bright sunny day. And this, uh, this paint scraper thing is invaluable. Now, I don't know that I'd want to use a sharp knife at slip, cut you or cut your roof. Now I'm just going to take this paint scraper and go kind of around the bottom and just kind of loosen up this lap sealant, being very careful not to push into the roof. Kind of keep this thing very flat as you push. So you can just kind of release that bond. All right, let's see what we've done here. I'm just going to kind of go in here and release this. It's got a lot down underneath this bottom here too. And just kind of release all this bond because it is really stuck and you really want it stuck. Here's the end of my cable. And this is those crummy connect. And look at that thing, it is so loose. Oh, for pity's sake. Look at that. Just come on, guys, get with the construction program. And I want to tell you what, these things aren't worth a poo. So I'm going to replace all those. Let's clean this up. So this is exactly why I ordered that plate. Uh, I could probably cover that opening, but because this thing has a secondary hole here for the cable, and I won't need that for the uh, new unit that I have, then that would have caused me some kind of problems. Uh, I would not have been able to cover that, and I sure as the world would have had leaking. So uh, this, is, this is good news, good planning. Taking just a minute, giving this a really nice clean here, just so that I know there's no residue or anything that's going to prevent this lap sealant from bonding to it. And um, I haven't cleaned my roof for the season. It's not too bad, but it needs it. You can see how you can see the difference between here and there. If uh, you haven't ever done that before and you're concerned about it, it's pretty simple. Just look up in the uh, top right hand side of your screen. I've just put a card there. And uh, there's instructions on how I clean my roof. It's a pretty nice process. And you want to do that. It gives you time to inspect everything and make sure that everything is intact. And plus, uh, it adds that reflective quality for the summer so you don't have to run your air conditioner as hard. 
All right. Next thing I want to show you how to do is uh, replace these ends. Um, these things are useless. Uh, some people call them a screw on. They're just terrible. And if you're going to go to all this trouble, you might as well make sure that everything is in good shape. And I'm going to use the same type of connectors that your installers use, like from Dish or DirecTV or your cable company. These are very high grade connectors. And you'll see some basic tools here. This is a stripper. You'll notice I put a rubber band on, a couple rubber bands on mine just to make it work a little bit better. Just an old installer's trick. And this just really makes it easy to trim that cable and get it ready to go. Be very careful and don't cut that center conductor. There we go. Now the other thing that you'll want to do is look inside here and make sure no strands are touching the center conductor. If that happens, then you will have a short and you will have no signal. So just word from the wise, make sure that that is nice and clear. Boom. These are RG6 connectors. Uh, this type right here, you'll see that. And they slip on like so. Now, it's gonna be hard for this to show on the camera. I don't know if it will show, but that white dielectric needs to go right to the base of the inside. That's very, very important. And uh, I know that's hard to translate here. You'll want to take you a pair of clippers and cut this almost flush. You can see here on the end. And here's the tool. This is a tool specifically designed for this connector. And that provides a watertight connection. And I will promise you, you could almost swing from the trees with that. That works out great. First thing that it calls for is filling this base with lap sealant before we mount it. Now, if this was a rubber roof, I would be using something like Dicor. Uh, this is a PVC roof. So I am going to be using something called X-Trim. Um, this is specifically formulated for that. Whatever you do, do not use household latex caulks or something like Gorilla Glue. That will be a disaster. Uh, this is a what they refer to as a self-leveling lap sealant. And that is what you want to use. Okay, before I go any further, I'm going to carefully do this so that I don't lose it. There we go. I've got to move this thing to this other side. Thank goodness I've got plenty of slack here. And there is the base plate. And I'm going to go ahead and put this guy on here. And I'm going to take this 7 16 wrench and go ahead and give it a nice firm snug. You don't want to get all Arnold Schwarzenegger here. You just want to make sure that's good and tight. A little bit more than finger tight. And I'm going to check these others while I have them here and make sure they're tight from the factory. So problems later on and they are good. Now then, I'm going to take my plate and now pull this out. This is to connect to the control.
Okay, we have uh, made sure it was centered downstairs and we're gonna finish putting some screws in it, some lap sealant, and then we'll be done. inside and finish this up. The uh, signal indicator goes here. So the next thing I'm going to put the knob on, there's a small slot here. Only one way this should, should go on. Next, we're going to replace the power inserter here, and uh, I've suspected that either this was bad or the coax connectors are bad in here. I'm going to mark these just so that I can keep up with them. All right, you don't want to reverse these wires. One of these is a power wire and one of these is a ground wire. We definitely don't want to reverse them, so I'm gonna take my little handy voltmeter here and see which is which. So it looks like the yellow wire is power. And that is ground. So for future reference, I'm going to put a plus for power. All right, we're going to put it back together. And it is no slack in these wires. It is tight, tight, tight. I did take a voltmeter and tested which was ground and which was power just in case. But wow, this is some kind of tight. There we go. And now the living room TV. And power. And before I screw everything in, I'm going to hit the power and make sure i got a light. I do. Nice green light. And I'll hook the TV up. Now according to this, you rotate until you get the last LED that will flicker. You turn, there's an attenuator knob here. And you turn it on until you get the last light on. And I have the last light on now. So that's what it looks like. And then there's a small switch right here. You can turn it off so it's not bothering you in the evening or whatever else if, at night. You know, if you've got, the, got it turned on or something like that and you don't want that flickering over your bed. Boom, there we go. Boom, there we go. Boom, got 10. So far we've got all the ones I want. Oh, there we go. Looks like we're going to get all the ones I want to see. Awesome. Super simple. Features a silver dial with a stainless steel band. So they can monitor. You know what? This is John. Ah, 
Now that hurt. This Good. Look at this. In Vienna. All right, that's it. Overall, this really wasn't a bad project. Uh, I estimated about four hours, and about four hours is what it took. Um, two things that were the most difficult, actually three things that were the most difficult in this project, and it really was just more time consuming than it was, not physical labor or, the, or anything like that. Uh, the first one is when I set the antenna down on top of the roof, uh, the hole is about that big and I had to center that. Um, there was no way that I could see how to center that with the plate over it and I did have to bring Joan in and she had to lay down in the bed with a flashlight and then uh, yell at me when I got it pretty much close to center. But uh, it did take an extra set of hands or really an extra set of knives to be able to get that done. Uh, the second thing that was difficult was what you saw trying to change out the power inserter. Um, really it's, it's, it's not a fault of the installation itself uh, or the product itself, but uh, when they manufactured the camper here, they left absolutely no slack in the cable. So it was very, very tight, very difficult. I think you see in the video how I had to fumble with that a little bit and actually kind of trim some things around with a pocket knife to get that back inserted inside of that. But it really wasn't difficult. The next thing that was I didn't expect was the cables were not labeled. I guess I should have expected that. And when I looked at the old power inserter that I took down, the old Batwing power inserter, none of those uh, coax connections were marked. On the new one, it actually says antenna number two, satellite, or it actually says TV number two, antenna and satellite. So you know exactly where to hook everything up. I did have to trace those out with a volt ohm meter. Uh, if you don't know how to use a volt ohm meter, well, I've got you taken care of. Look up top, there's your card, and I'll show how to use a volt ohm meter. And, and I just, all I did was short out one side and take my volt ohm meter to the outside and to the little post until I got continuity. Again, watch that video and you'll understand those terms. I think you'll find that very, very helpful. Overall, I think I'm going to like this product a lot for a number of reasons. One, I don't have to worry about cranking up and cranking it down. I never did like that. I checked the signal on the old antenna, or at least I knew where the signal was on the old antenna because I've used it here multiple, multiple times before. And the TV that you saw up in the bedroom actually has a signal meter on it itself and I can see the strength of how powerful the, the uh, TV signal is coming in. And I got the exact same power reading. Uh, matter of fact, about half of the stations I get full bars just like you would see on a cell phone. So I was really thrilled about that as well. Well, as you look at this installation as I finished up up top, you know, it really wasn't that bad. It's a nice low profile. I don't have to worry about cranking it up, cranking it down. How nice is that going to be for a while? I looked at my signal. Now, the good thing is, I, being here before and using the old Batwing antenna, I knew what my signals would be on the TV. My TV actually has a little signal meter that you can press, just kind of like on your phone where you can see the bars. And um, I can actually go and look at it numerically as well. And wow, it was just as good as what I had before. I think this is going to do well. Amazon, again, in the ratings that I saw there, roughly about a 9 liked out of 1 didn't like. 9 out of 10, that's not bad. And who knows? You really don't know what might have happened in those that were put in. The, the instructions are very good. They're very specific. Follow them. I follow them to a T. And look, I had no problems. Everything came up just like I wanted to be able to come up. So I'm pretty thrilled about that. Well, I hope you have found this helpful. Uh, if so, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed the channel, would you? I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Lots of tips, lots of modifications to the fifth wheel. You can apply in your fifth wheel, your pull behind, your travel trailer, or even in your Class A or Class C. I think a lot of things relate that can go there. And then we have lots of travel that we have from time to time that Joan and I share as we just go all over the place. And we really want to bring you along and ho hopefully have a chance to be able to meet you while we're out on the road as well. Thank you again for watching. Thank you again for subscribing. And look, you know why we all do this. I know why I do this, right? That's right. It's because I love RV life. Mm -hmm.